FNN。The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes。Now toll free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight or internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. The Trader's Edge. Now Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April second, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you have a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. For that, send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We've got a sea of red out there. All the U.S. indices that we track are trading to the downside. Dow's off 432, a little over 1%. S&P 53, 1%, 270 for the NASDAQ, about 1.5%, 1 and 8 tenths for the Russell. That's a 40, a $40 move. Semis are down 116, 2 and 4 tenths percent. You've got gold trading out at 2258. Silver's up at 2586. Lights recruit trading out at 8482. Natural gas up three pennies at 1.867. And the 30 year Treasury is down a uh, 24 ticks printed out at 117.24. Our dollar, our leaders in the clubhouse, dollar wise, the upside, exact sciences, an $8 move there. Grayscale is up $8. GE Verona is up five bucks. Weatherford International up about five. And Pioneer Natural Resources up four. To the downside, it is MicroStrategy, 105 point move, 6.5%. Humana, a 48 point move, nearly 14%. Super Micro, 46 bucks. To the downside, almost 5% there. Decker's Outdoor, 4.5%. Or 41 bucks and Broadcom is down 40. That's a 3% move. We got movers, but we mostly have shakers out there. So where do we want to begin? I'll tell you where we begin. Let's go take a look at the daily and the weekly equity future contracts. Let's do this. Where is Stevie? He's in the wrong spot. Give me a moment. We'll get back here. Let's take a look at the daily first. We take a look at the daily time frame. All four of them. What do we know? We know that we've got topping patterns now for each of these. In the case of the uh, Russell 2000 yesterday, so it had a TD9 count top that's still in place yesterday, formed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top as well. You've got a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top in the NQ for the daily time frame. You've got a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top in the ES Mini for the daily time frame and the YM. So we've got topping patterns there. If we take a look at where profile levels are at. So I've got slightly different profile areas in the NQ, I believe it is, uh, between the uh, black background charts and the white background charts. Right now, the ES Mini is trading below support at 52.57. If it remains below that, we're likely going to see a move to 52.12 or 51.67. In the case of the NQ on the black background charts, what we know is if the move is only a counter trend move to the downside, price will find support at the 18.026 level. That is the center of its bear structured profile based upon these black background charts. We know that when you trade above the top of a bear structured profile and you do it for more than two consecutive sessions, in this case here, we've been doing it for several weeks now. Um, when you trade above that, any moves lower, as we experienced back here, the last time we had a move lower was back on March the 15th. At that point in time, everybody was ready to say curtains in the NQ. The problem was price found support where a counter trend rally would find support. And that's at the level of 18026. It's based on a closing basis out there. So if price is able to get below 18158, we're likely going to see a move to 18026. If price closed below 18026, it tells us that this is more than a counter trend move to the downside. Now, 
That being said, that doesn't mean it's curtains because we also know the bottom of the profile is where buyers are at, and that is support. We can see, even as we take a look at this chart here, we can see that that level was also tested, that level being 17,761. So that's what we've got. We take a look at the 30, uh, the daily time frame for the NQ. In the case of the Dow, it's testing the top of its daily profile, very close to it, which is at 13, 39, 313, a close below that, which suggests lower price. Now, in the case of Russell 2000, it's making an attempt to form a new profile today. It's still in place out there. In the buy zone, which is trading below, by the way, the buy zone is between 2092 and 2101. If we get two consecutive close below 2101, any rallies would find resistance or should find resistance inside that zone. The exact opposite of what you and I looked at inside the NQ. The real, the point to make here is to understand where some profile support is at. Understand that on a daily time frame, we've got topping patterns. And let's go take a look at the weekly chart because when we get the weekly and daily topping patterns all at the same time, we start having price get back inside uh, profile levels. That's an important message for us. Well, now it's potential. It's only Tuesday. It's only 11:12. I have no idea what the candle formation will look like at uh, Friday at 5 p.m. But if this were Friday at 5 p.m., we would then have a sell the D point pattern inside the ES mini. The ES mini for its weekly time frame. Um, uh, is missing a topping signal. It negated a TD9 count top, but now we might have a sell the D point pattern. In the case of the NQ, it still retains its TD9 count top. In the case of the Dow, it may be generating a Rhodesman indicator top. We don't know what the candle is going to look like at Friday at 5 p.m. Right now, it's a bearish engulfing. Right now, it's also a key reversal bar. The same thing with regard to the ES mini. And the key reversal bar just simply says you have to close one tick lower than the open. So if we get that, no matter what whether it's a bearish engulfing candle or not, or a bear sash candle or any other type of reversal signal, key reversal bar would do the trick. And that's really the same thing for the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 will go ahead. It formed a TD9 count top last week. It'll complete that TD9 count top this week, no matter what. So what I'm saying or what I'm suggesting right now as of 1113 in the morning is that the weekly charts are now starting to confirm that we've got tops for the weekly and for the daily. What does that mean? That means we could or should expect at least a couple week pullback. Now, I'm speaking in advance of Friday. Don't, a lot can happen between now and then. But if that's the way that the, uh, uh, the, the, the ball rolls out here, that's the way that the signals come in, the message is to expect or anticipate a further move lower. Now, in the case of the weekly time frame charts, you've got support inside the ES mini between 51.22 and 51.56. In the case of the NQ, it's between 17.490 and 17.852 for the weekly time frame. Shoot, in the case of the Dow, a counter trend move would find support at 38.594. In the case of the Russell 2000, the levels to be looking at would be 20.48 as a potential next stop to the downside, followed by 19.69. That is the bottom of its daily profile. And yes, Mr. Bill, there are TD9 count bottoms across the board out here on the 30 minute time frame. We'll switch over to those. We're going to go take a look at what's going on on the intraday periods. But right now, we're going to take a look at the one that is, well, I don't have that up. How did, how did that happen? Oh, I know. My system, I had to reboot that. But I'll get that up here momentarily. The 30-minute equity futures charts, I'm going to change the screens. You'll be able to see that. You'll be able to see those TD9 count patterns out there. When we get back to this break here, we'll talk about these patterns and what they may be telling us right now from an intraday standpoint. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So my natural progression when we take a look at a daily and a weekly time frame chart and they are generating uh, topping patterns out there is to take a look at the intraday chart. So the one intraday time period that has the most consistent signals out here is the uh, 30 minute. And we take a look at that. You can see you've got TD nine count bottom pattern that's still in place out here for the ES mini for the NQ and for the uh, Dow. The Russell 2000 negated its TD9 count pattern uh, just as we were coming on the air at 11 o'clock. Price closed below the low of the bar, uh, following bar number nine. That low was, well, I gotta move this over here to tell you what it was. That low was a 2082.60 and price closed uh, below that as we came into the 11 o'clock hour out there. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, just to open this up, not all hope is lost. You can clearly see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, I don't know that it's attained that level just yet, but we'll go ahead and we'll put that in here. So there's your A to B. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and move this over. And there's your C to D level out here. So you can see it's attained the one-to-one -one area. And therefore, if at 1130, it's 1119 right now, this generates a bullish reversal candle, you'll have a buy the D point pattern. Now, bullish reversal candles for any of these, they each have A to B equals CD to the downside patterns. They would also confirm a buy the D point. But that doesn't matter whether you have one or two bottoming patterns. We're just looking for a bottoming pattern to then give us an idea of, okay, where is price headed to? Is, was this a bottom? Well, when you're at the bottom of a daily, when you're a day, potential daily support, it can be. I don't know that that's the message right now. Instead, let's just take a look at what is the message of the market for the 30-minute time frames based upon these bottoming signals. And that's pretty simple for you and I to answer. In the case of the ES Mini, price should go target its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 52.55. That if it just if it gets up to that level, rejects it and starts turning back down, it was just a little counter trend move. So watch the 52, 55 ish area. Price is going to move up and down as price moves up and down as well. In the case of the NQ, that range, that zone, that area is around 18, 311. It'll be a little bit higher than that, especially if we rally further. Again, if price stops there and moves lower, then it was just a counter trend move. If price closes above that, then I don't know if new profiles will form. So right now we have to use the existing profiles. You could get the ES 
mini that could get all the way up to 5286 easily, even 5292, the NQ, and the 18461 to 18485. Now, I say easily. I don't mean that it'll be that easy to do, but that is a possibility. But that's why you want to watch those oscillator and change line signals. In the case of the Dow, the Dow is actually forming a new profile for its 30-minute time frame. I would anticipate and expect that over the course of the next hour or so, we'll see the same thing unfold inside the ES and the NQ. Right now, what we know is that price should go target its oscillator and change line. That's printing at about 39,530. It's also inside a profile that has support at, uh, maybe it'd be easier if I do this. The support of this profile is at 39,407. The resistance at 39,601. A close above 39,601 in the Dow would say we get back into the 29,796 area out there. In the case of the Russell 2000, again, we're watching to see if it generates a bullish reversal candle nine minutes from now. It currently is a bullish piercing candle. If it does, it's got to buy the D point pattern to here. Price should then rally up towards its oscillator and change line, and that's in the 2094 level. Now, that's what's coming from the 30 minute time frame charts. If we take a quick peek and take a look at some other multi time frame charts out here, We'll move over to that set of charts. What we will see is, thank you, Dan, XBI. That's what I thought. If we take a look at the ES Mini and you look at the bottom panel, remember there's A to B equals C dependent. So it's going to apply to all of these time frames out here. So in the case of the uh, the 15 minute and 10 minute, they both have Rhodes Mintum indicator or TD9 count bottoms and Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on the 10 minute. Uh, here, they're telling us that price should get up to 52.52 next. That's the 15 minute resistance. If price can close above that, 52.59 to 52.63. Remember, at 52.55 on the 30-minute time frame chart, you've got resistance. Now, the 60-minute time frame chart looks like, well, we don't know. It's 11.22. But if at 12 noon it's a bullish reversal candle, you've got to buy the D-point pattern. And there you got 52.64. So I, I wish I could just give you one number, but you have to take things in progression. Now, the cool thing about the shorter-term time frame charts is you get up to resistance first. If those resistance levels fail, then it helps to identify where price is headed to next out there, which is really what I'm trying to do. On a two-hour time frame chart, this bar here completes at 12 noon. That means by 2 p.m. or 4 p.m., you could or should have a completed TD9 count bottom pattern for the two-hour time frame chart. Let's go see what the other two-hour time frame charts are doing. Let's see if they're in unison as we speak right now. So that I don't have populated, but we will populate those here momentarily. Now, I'm not sure which uh, which contract is going to pop up here, so I might have to set this to uh, got September of 2022. Okay, so we haven't looked at the 120-minute uh, charts for quite some time, but we will oh, – shoot, sorry about that. I guess I have to let these populate. Darn. Uh, it's three minutes before the break. And, well, sh they shouldn't have to populate. Yeah, there we go. So we got the uh, June 2024 contract. So, I, you know, I've got to put all this in. It's going to get all the signals, pull up all the accurate data. But that's okay. We want to see. It. The, the thing we're really looking for is some type of synergy. Do they all do all four time frames? And we haven't seen that. It, quite frankly, for quite some time, uh, when we've looked at the equity futures out here, oh, 624. Let me get that. Oops. Put that in there. Uh, so we got a, uh, and so in the NQ, well, you can see there's the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside for the two hour time frame chart. It's only in bar number seven or bar number eight on the ES. We are no so, no so. So I can already see right here, I'm just going to go ahead and continue to populate it just to finish this out. But no synergy here. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't pay attention to them. The question becomes who's driving the train out there? If it's the NQ, you'd be looking for a bullish reversal candle out there. If it's the ES, you're just looking for a TD9 count bottom pattern to complete out there. So uh, so that's what we've got. We take a look at the equity future contracts out here. Let's not belabor this too much more. Uh, let's actually try to get into some requests that have come in. So uh, we'll switch over to those. And if we need to come back and take a look at the equity futures, I'll be more than happy to do so. So let's begin by taking a look at the first request that came in, which was from Nicholas. And Nicholas is asking the question with regard to Tesla, where is the next support level out there? So if we open up the daily time frame chart, we'll just look at the daily first and try to give him that level. What we see out here in the daily time frame is a wave number seven and a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern. And price is trading into that swing point. That swing point was March 14th. That swing point had volume of 126 million shares. In the first two hours of trading, Tesla has generated 61 million shares. So we know that Tesla is moving into that swing point with volume. It hasn't touched the bottom, but as long as it closes below 205.60, odds favor a move down to test support, which could be support, is the bottom of that candle, and that's at the 160.51 level. So that's one area of support, 160.51, Nicholas. That's the daily time frame. The weekly time frame shows that basically it's 
ad support. And ad support here are two different levels. One is a weekly breakout area. That's at 164.35, courtesy of the TD9 count pattern. The second is the bottom of a new profile that formed last week. The bottom of that profile for Tesla is at 165.02. So that's tying out to the uh, lows that we have out here for March the 14th. No, that was 160.51. Sorry about that. So you, on the weekly chart, price is basically testing support as we speak. On a monthly time frame, Nicholas, price is pulled back into its buy zone on a monthly basis. Now, if price closes below the low of that trading session on the daily base for March 14th, closes below 160.51, then the next area of support will be 144.38. That's not what we have right now. So you've got your support for your daily, your weekly. And if the daily fails, then we know where it's going to head to on the monthly time frame. So I hope that helps out, Nicholas, with regard to Tesla. Thanks so much for the request. We come back to this break. We're going to look at gold, platinum, UNH, and LABU for Dan inside the Tigers. Then we'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50%, and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. We've been asked to take a look at gold trading out about 2274 as we speak right now. Now, the first chart that I'm going to put up on my screen, because when we go take a look at the other uh, charts for gold, what we are going to be missing is any kind of a, a topping pattern. We take a look at a monthly, a weekly, and a, a daily time frame out there. But the question should be is, why did price stop where it did, right around the 2298 level? And the answer, I've got the answer to that question. That's because price hit a horizontal trading range boundary line. This is the weekly time frame chart that we've got for gold that's at 2298 if price can close above 2298 that would be a positive thing but we do have and, and that would also suggest to move up towards a 2550 level if i take these other horizontal trading range i'm not going to go into the explanation of of that but that's the only resistance area that i've got out here right now marcus with regard to goldilocks and you'd love to see price close above that level now let's get back to the multi set of time frame charts for gold those are the white background charts we'll be back there momentarily and and make sure that I get back to the right spot. Go live. Let me see. Yeah. So now we're taking a look at uh, Goldilocks's charts out here. So on a monthly time frame, I'm just going to simply open this up. This is the uh, June contract that we're taking a look at, which I prefer to, if we can get enough data, I prefer to look at this versus the continuous. Now, we can't pay attention to the oscillator and change line. There's just not enough data out here in order to do that. I have to switch to the continuous. But what you can see here, when we look at the June contract pattern, is that you are not seeing any kind of a topping signal. We are in bar number seven. Now, when I say we don't have a signal, we have a Rosemontum indicator signal that's been triggered. But that requires a bearish reversal candle to identify a top. So short of that, it just says take your umbrella out there. But bar number seven, so no topping pattern as we speak right now. That says the earliest topping signal would become could come next month or the month after that out there. But that's what the monthly time frame chart is saying. As we took a look at and we take a look at the weekly chart here, we kind of tied that into the 2298 level, that horizontal trading range boundary line. You can see we are in bar number seven out there. So on a weekly time frame, you could get a TD9 count. Uh, forms between next week and then two weeks after that. The daily time frame is one for us to keep our eye on. Bar number six is where we're at, but we have that Rhodes indicator signal that is triggered. A bearish reversal candle would identify a top and suggest move back to support, which in this case would be in the 2223 to 2235 level. Now, now let's get into the intraday charts out here for Goldilocks. On a 30 minute time frame, I do see a wave seven signal. Let's make sure that that is a good enough call. Uh, 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 no, I don't think so. It's really in uh, wave number six. That's letter F versus that G out here. But that doesn't matter because what we know about on a 30 minute time frame is prices right now trading below profile support at 22.78. So that is suggesting to you and I that gold should pull back further. Pull back further to where? Well, if we look at a 60 minute time frame chart, the 60 minute time frame chart has a TD9 count top. It has a Rhodes Mentum indicator top that was uh, completed at 11 a.m. Now price is trading below profile support at 22.74. If at 12 noon, we've got 27 minutes to go, we get a close below 22.74, that's going to suggest to move back to 22.68. If price closes below 2268, I'm not sure what that means just yet. I don't have the, I can't believe I don't have that tool on this set of charts. Okay, uh, 2268 would be its call. If I look at a two hour time frame chart, you've got a TD9 count top that is completing here at 12 noon. Price is um, above profile, so it looks like 2263 is its price target. So we got 2263, 2268 as price targets to the downside. You want to watch those areas. If those levels fail, that tells you about a for, that tells you that key support has failed for those intraday time periods. On the four-hour time frame chart. You have a key reversal bar right now that would confirm a Roachman to indicator top. Now, this candle will not complete till 2 p.m., but it's a key reversal bar. All it needs to do is close one tick lower. When I say one tick lower, if by 2 p.m. gold is closing, close, if gold closes at 22.72.10 or less, you would have a confirmed Roachman to indicator top for the four-hour time frame, TD9 count top on the five-hour time frame chart out here. This says watch its oscillator and change line. That is where price is at support. And that support level here is at 22.71. This is called 20, yeah, 22.71. Price closes below that. That's going to suggest 22.54. So interestingly enough, I didn't realize this till we, you know, I didn't, when I pulled up the charts out there that we had so many intraday topping signals for Goldilocks out there. I know that what Marcus was looking at was for the long term, and long term, um, I think this is still pretty good. However, and this is let's see, let's take a look at gold this way. 
Let's look at the uh, consecutive days higher and lower. We are now in a bar number six of moves higher out here. We did get to a bar number seven back here on March the 8th, and then we had a, a pullback out there. Now, this is a daily time frame. I'm interested in seeing what are the longer term periods, because that's really what Marcus was interested. So what does the weekly time frame chart show us here? The weekly time frame shows us that we are going to be potentially in week number two to the upside. Um, if we do get pullbacks, they typically last two bars, uh, two to three bars to the downside. So nothing really big there. How about the monthly time frame? Where are we at on a monthly time frame basis for consecutive moves higher? And uh, so only bar number two. Now, this is what was the signal that I shared with folks that and this was back in February, that this could be the signal that we are at the beginning of a new bull market out there. It's with this two bar pullback. Now, I've got the June contract. Those of you that, well, I, I can probably show you the, the reason. Uh, so that should have been something else. Okay. Uh, if we, let me see if, if I've got enough data here, just real quickly, relatively quickly. Oh, that's the wrong chart. Don't pull this open, Stevie. Sorry about that. It was this one here that I was looking at. Let me pull this open, see if this has got enough data to go back. So now if I take this back, uh, I don't think it does. Um, well, I've, this is the rally that took us into 2011. Even if I go back further, it's going to show the same thing, which is all retracements on a monthly basis. We're about two months to the downside. But as we speak right now, we're only two months to the upside, so I don't see anything gigantic or big here. Now, this is the continuous contract, which kind of alters the data. We know we're at new all-time highs. That's not what it shows when we take a look at the continuous contract, which was the whole reason to, on this chart here, to take a look at June so that I could provide Marcus with a better feel for what's really going on out there but right now it looks like goldilocks wants to pull back from an intraday standpoint and let's watch that 22 i'd say that 22 63 uh 50 level that will be an important area to watch so marcus I hope that helped you out with regard to uh, goldilocks let's go take a look at platinum as well um platinum is in the july contract so we take a look at platinum here uh, i have such little data uh that if i put up well I, i'll just put it up here let's put a pl 0724. Let's take a quick peek. It's just not enough data to generate anything that's uh, helpful to you and I with regard to platinum for its monthly time frame. Really the same on the weekly. So the weekly chart does show that price uh, may be trading. Well, it's trading above its oscillator and change line. So that's a positive. It looks like price found support at the bottom of its profile, which is at 914.50 out there. So if you look at the daily time frame, here's what we know about the daily time frame, Marcus. It formed a TD9 count top. Let's pull this back here. You can see this pattern. It was the bar following bar number nine that identified the high. That's an important high out there, which is at 957.20. What we can see on the daily time frame is prices inside its profile. And if price can close above 937.90, the center of its profile, you should see it move to 959.70. Otherwise, in platinum, I'd have to say all you have is a consolidation with inside profiles after forming a TD9 count pop. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Before we move off of the platinum charts, I do want to share that if you take a look at some of the intraday time periods, 30 minute, for example, has got a road's momentum indicator top price right now testing an area of support, 930.30. It closed below that. We're likely headed to 942. TD9 count top on the 60 minute chart price finding support at oscillator and change on a 930.20. A close below 930.20 is going to suggest to move back towards 916.20. Two hour chart, it's going to complete a TD9 count top. That suggests move back to 925 so those are the intraday charts to watch on platinum i hope that helps you out i know that you had one additional question which was to take a look at the ratio of gold divided by platinum and whether or not it's completed an a to b equals c to the upside so for that what we need to do is change over to a different set of screens let's go take a look at that black background screen out here give me a moment the answer to your question is yes. It has completed the one-to-one. -one. It did that last week out here. Screens, black, here you go. So this is this is the continuous contracts of uh, gold and platinum. This is the ratio, the division of it. And you can see that this uh, the one-to-one -one price projection was $2.43 from a ratio standpoint out there. Now, um, what does this mean? That I can't tell you. What I can tell you, though, and just simply A to B equals CD folklore language out there, is you need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top out here. Um, and that would say that you could get a bearish shooting star candle this week, but we really wouldn't know until Friday. But to answer your question, do I show a A to B equals CD, a one-to-one -one price projection? I do. I see a 0.618 retracement out there for that B to C leg. What you're waiting for here for what it might mean to you would be a bearish reversal candle. So Marcus, hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for your request out there. Let's get to the next request. Actually, let's do this here. Uh, just in keeping with metals and then mining out here, let's get to the white background chart since it just popped up on the screen out here. If we take a look at gold from a weekly standpoint, it's got an A to B equals CD that doesn't complete until you're towards a 2350-ish area out there. Uh, silver is trading above the top of its daily profile. This is the first day up there. A close above uh, this level here, the candle says from March 21st out there, a close above 25.97 would be a bullish thing. Otherwise, that is resistance, which so far has held. If we take a look at the GDX out here, it also has an A to B equals C to the upside. I'm not going to be concerned about this wave number seven level that uh, shows up there, but still, the GDX will be. Um, well, the GDX will be controlled by the direction of gold for the most part out there. And so what's going to control the direction of gold? Uh, normally, I would say the U.S. dollar index, but that has kind of, uh, which usually has an inverted relationship over the last several, um, last couple of weeks out there, it has had a directional relationship. But nonetheless, if we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, and that can, back, can go back and decouple, if we take a look at... Just looking for it myself. Thought it was right here. Here we go. So we take a look at the. So if I went to look at the U.S. dollar index, we did that during the 
of the 11 a.m. update out there. It said that if we got a bearish reversal candle, it would form a sell the D point pattern. Well, the opposite of that, so to speak, would be the euro. And if it forms a bullish reversal candle today, uh, it would form a buy the D point pattern. At the present time, it's a bullish piercing candle. It has to close halfway inside of yesterday's candle in order to maintain that. But it doesn't have to do that. Today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count and breakout support at 1.073 out there. That pattern, of course, completes tomorrow. But this suggests to Stevie that what the euro wants to do is at least rally in towards that oscillator and change line. And that's at a buck 08. And we can see on the weekly chart, which is the chart below, at a buck 08 is the oscillator and change line. So it appears that between either between today uh, or tomorrow, we should start to see the euro rally up towards that 108 level what the and it's 53 percent 57 percent weighting in the u.s dollar index if the euro is getting stronger well geez then the uh, dollar should be getting weaker out there and if we take a look at the uh, japanese yen it still maintains its td9 count top but that oscillator and change line continues to act as support you really need to see it close below 151.40 for that td9 count top to take traction and of course if price were to close above 151.97 the yen would continue to weaken the dollar would get stronger now that's a 13 percent weighting versus 57.6 in the case of the great british pound yesterday negated it's by the d point pattern that was formed back here with that bullish piercing the candle so now it needs a new bullish reversal candle to confirm another by the d point pattern which would then rally up to 126. But I think all eyes should be focused and continuing to focus on the euro versus at this stage of the game versus just take a look at the U.S. dollar index. We've got to understand what's going on underneath the covers, and boom, voila, we just did. Now let's get to the other two requests that we have in the system out here. The first one is to take a look at United Health. UNH is for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. So the question is, where is price headed to? When I take a look at the monthly time frame chart, Mr. Bill, that's where we're going to start here. What we see is a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That was confirmed in December of 2023. What we have seen since then is a series of, series of lower highs out here. And now today, price is trading below uh, its bullish structured profile support. Now, I don't know if that's going to hold. It's only April 2nd. But as long as price remains below 467.48, Mr. Bill, it could be telling us that price long term wants to get back to its breakout area. That would be 383.12. Let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart. What do we know about it? Well, it's trading into a cluster of swing points, so to speak. The one that's most important is one from June 16th. That swing point did volume of 34 million shares. So far, in only a day and a half of trading, we are at 8 million shares. Yesterday, well, let me see. What are we doing on a, week, on a daily basis? Yesterday was three. Day before was three, four. Day before was three. So there's about three to four million shares a day out there. Let's pull this back. See if I can figure out anything else. So the A to B equals CD pattern. The B point. So I got to do this off screen. Well, I'll, I'll just change screens, Mr. Bill. We'll do this together. Try to try to figure out the A to B equals CD pattern. So we've taken care of the monthly piece of this, but let's get over to the black background charts. Let's get to the area where I've got that set of tools. Let's back a little further. Back quite a ways further. Here we go. So we're taking like United Health. U N H is the uh, ticker symbol, and it's the weekly time frame that we're taking. Like, there could be two different A to B equals CD patterns out here, but let's take a look at. So that would be a consolidation that we had. That's so the interesting thing here, Mr. Bill, is there was there's also a consolidation pattern that's in play, which gives us a measured move. So there's a couple different ways for us to take a look at this. Let's draw in that uh, consolidation pattern, which looks like pretty much looks like uh, this. Actually, you can get all the way, yeah. So you get all the way down here. Here's the consolidation pattern that is in play, Mr. Bill. So right now, price is uh, taking on uh, the low of that consolidation, in essence, is from uh, June uh, June 12th, the week that began June 12th. 34 million shares, and so far we're at 8.2, so no idea if we're going to hold that. But if, in fact, uh, price were to uh, bust through this consolidation, then we would have a measured move. And that measured move would be equal or greater than the consolidation. What this would do is this would take us down towards that 337 level. Now, on the monthly time frame, the price target was 383 to the downside. So I'd have to say it would be inside that kind of range. Now, let's take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns that are present out here. The one that I see 
is one that's got a high out here from the trading week of November 27th. The B point's pretty clear, and that's January 22nd, and then it does a retracement into February 26th. A 0.7186 retrace, a 71% retracement out here. If that B point gets passed with volume, the 1 1 price projection really gets to the bottom of the consolidation area at 436, but below that, you're looking at 410. So, Mr. Bill, I hope that answers your question with regard to United Health. We come back to this break. We'll take a look at LABU and XBI to get a feel for where they're headed to. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50 percent. I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price. And this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, S&P Biotech ETF uh, area. We're uh, going to start by taking a look at XBI. That is the one-to-one -one, uh, ETF that covers that area right now. Price is trading below a swing point. That's the B point of an A to B equals CD pattern and with volume. That's from March 19th. There was about 10.9 million shares of traded hands that day. So far, we're at 6.8 in the first two hours of trading. So we got volume. If price closed below 92.15, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern that gets you down to 86.18. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the bottom of its profile is 88.10. If we look at the top of the monthly profile, it's 89.20. So Stevie would say 86.10 to 89.20 are the areas to be watching with regard to XBI. If we take a look at LABU out here, in the case of LABU, it's one-to-one -one A to B equals CD would give us a price projection of about uh, 89.39. The weekly time frame has got profile support at 113.70. Again, different profile levels when we take a look at a 3X versus a 1X. I would be paying attention to the 1X out there for the uh, signals and profile levels, but uh, you wanted LABU, and so you've got that A to B equals CD to the downside, and that 89.39. 
nine level with a potential support being 113.70. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to LABU. Let's go take a look at those 30 minute charts while we've got about a minute left here. Uh, before we end the uh, show and uh, we do have new profiles that did form as suspected so in the case of the es mini and these are the td9 count bottoms they are still in effect out here the bottom of its current profile for a 30 minute basis uh, i need to move that over is at uh 5239 the top is at 5257 for the nq the bottom of its profile is at 18224 the top is at 18292 the dow that was already in place out there again that remains at the uh, bottom is down at the 39407 level and the top at 39601 each of those have td9 count bottom patterns they have not gotten up to their oscillator and change line those are areas that you want to watch in the case of the nq its oscillator and change line is basically the top of that profile if price were to close above that we had lower likewise the downside if you see an ES mini close on a 30 minute basis that is below 52.35 we had lower in the case of the Dow that low to watch is 39.368 and in the case of the NQ the area to watch the downside is 18.20150 phew folks have a terrific Tuesday thanks much for joining us I'll look forward to speaking with you again and I'll see you on wonderful Wednesday take care folks